Maybe you can tell by the length of my beard. But this took a little longer than I planned. It's mid-February in coastal British Columbia, currently minus three Celsius. Um, I have several chores to do today. Uh, I have chores to do every day <laughs> that I'm here. Um, I'm doing this alone. Uh, it makes it uh, considerably more difficult, um, though, though a little rewarding still, uh, especially given the, uh, the nature of the area. I have a project for today, which is modifying my solar system or I should say, modifying the output of my generator to, to work better with my solar system, charge my batteries. I'll go over that when we get back to the, the lab tent. Yep, lab tent. <laughs> uh, before that though, I thought uh, I would just give you a quick tour. Uh, yeah, show you the area and uh, we'll go get some firewood. You can imagine these <laughs> these were monster trees uh, looks like they're probably about four and a half almost five feet at the base in diameter so I'm going to go show you uh, what what we need to do for today So here is my solar array. It consists of 10 panels. They're 360 watts approximately each. In the summer, the sun at around 10 a.m. comes up above these trees here and passes directly overhead and sets in the west, of course. So in the summertime, these have direct sunlight for the majority of the day. And it's plenty uh, for my for my purposes. We're in the winter right now, and as you can see, the sun for the majority of the day is occluded uh, by these trees here. I do get some power, but for certain tasks, especially uh, when you're doing some prospecting work, I need to crush some rock, um, use my charge up my tools and equipment, which are all electric, and so I tend to augment it. Uh, with my generator but because my batteries are lead acid I'd like to use my solar controller to charge them. It's capable of charging the batteries from grid power but the grid power has to be split phase 240 volts it, it won't it won't work it it's just not set up to do that I can't configure it uh, to use 120 volts uh, as the source to charge the batteries so Unfortunately, my single phase generator, uh, I have to use directly. I plug it into my, my power system and I can use power that way. But 
that's not ideal. I already have batteries and I already have a really good inverter. What I want to be able to do is put the power from this directly into my solar controller and let it charge my batteries and provide the power. I'm going to build a bridge rectifier and actually just unplug this in the evening, uh, plug it into the generator with the modification. So theoretically, as long as I can smooth out the power enough, at the very least, uh, it, it'll keep my batteries healthy. Before I get started working on the generator modification, I would like to give you a quick disclaimer. Um, I have a background in computer science, but my experience uh, in the last 10 years has been primarily with uh, specialized electronic equipment. So I'm comfortable working with electronics, but I'm not a professional electrical engineer. Um, and as specifically what we're going to do today um, is missing some rather important safety devices in the circuit. Uh, namely an isolation transformer and a MOV and, and uh, PTC, a few other things that you would include in something like this in order to increase their safety, prevent potential fires, and definitely, uh, you know, personal hazard. So we're dealing with uh, potentially fatal uh, power and voltage. Uh, so if you're not familiar with electronics, please don't try anything that you see. These aren't intended as uh, tutorial videos. It's just, uh, it's just how I get, get by out here. I'm going to uh, show you just uh, briefly the lab setup. Primarily, my work out here uh, revolves around mineral development. I do have some, uh, you know, equipment for, for electronics testing, and I do do various things. I just have an entry-level oscilloscope, a couple of uh, bench power supplies, of course, multimeters, uh, and, and soldering iron. This is the basic plan, uh, and for those of you who are into electronics, I mean, this is uh, pretty trivial. Uh, not much to a bridge rectifier. But for those of you who uh, are, are not familiar with electronics, uh, you can spend quite a bit of time uh, explaining things, but if you, don't, uh, if you don't know the difference between DC and AC, well, uh, I'm not gonna go into, into that much detail. But suffice to say, uh, I've stolen these uh, capacitors out of an old power supply that I had in one of my drums, uh, and I do actually, or did actually have these, uh, these diodes, general purpose diodes, uh, in my stock of uh, various electronic components. And they're 600 volt, uh, 60 amp. That should be more than enough uh, uh, for my purposes. So we're going to be uh, targeting 10 amps of charge current, 10 amps of DC current at approximately 120 volts. So here I have my uh, solar controller. Now. Right now, uh, the solar panels are providing 195 volts. It's actually a, an overcast day, quite overcast day, three amps. So I'm getting 180 watts from the solar panels. So at the moment, uh, it's a bit of a surplus. Um, you know, I'm, I'm actually charging my batteries right now, even though uh, I've got some lights on and my computer running, but just barely. So certainly when the uh, sun goes down, uh, that's not the case. And so I've only got about uh, six kilowatt hours of, uh, of battery and lead acid at that. So it's quite important that I keep them charged. So my plan is to take that 120 volt output, rectify it, and then feed it in uh, on the same line from my solar panels. Obviously I'll disconnect the solar panels whenever I'm, I'm running the, the generator. But then as far as this unit is concerned, uh, it's going to be getting power from uh, the solar array, of course, even at night. Uh, it'll be coming from the generator. I'm not going to go through that configuration, but I can go and set the maximum amount of current that this thing is going to accept from the solar panels, which is great. That means that I don't need to... Uh, well, that means that it's not absolutely vital that we limit the current here. So other than an inline fuse, which I haven't uh, drawn on the schematic, I'm gonna put that on the output uh, and set it at about 15 amps. Uh, there's not going to be really any other protections. Um, ideally, you'd have an isolation transformer as well as a MOV uh, and, and then have a fuse and or a breaker uh, and a few other components here that I won't go into. Because I can't make a printed circuit board here uh, is to use this piece of aluminum and just mount these diodes in such a way, oops, mount the diodes in such a way that uh, it'll be easy to wire. I'm gonna use these uh, copper uh, crimp sleeves and I'll solder the connections on. Uh, yeah, we're gonna build it like that and then we'll set our capacitors. I might just use some hot glue 
uh, to kind of place everything here. The, the ratings of these diodes are high enough that uh, the temperature shouldn't be an issue. We're not going to be pulling that much current through it. And so they shouldn't be getting that hot, but they will be mounted at least on the face to this, uh, to this aluminum bar. This is an um, aircraft uh, wire. We'll put that all in the same uh, connector. I'm going to solder up the rest of this stuff, just set the camera aside, uh, and just get it done. I'll show you when I'm finished. Okay, here is the nearly complete uh, rectifier. <laughs> now, almost at the moment of truth, I'm going to strip the ends off of these, and then I'm just going to use marettes. Uh, to connect the uh, cables, just especially just for testing here. All right, when I'm going to actually use this, this evening I'm gonna go in, we'll make a little case for this. I'm gonna start this generator. Once it's running, I'm gonna turn the camera back on, <laughs> plug it in for the first time with the camera rolling. Um, at the very least, it might be interesting. here. So that's uh, just the capacitive discharge. We're going to see maybe a spark. <laughs> okay, we've got our shiny new bridge rectifier plugged in. Uh, it's putting out 140 volts nominal. Uh, that's because 120 volts RMS is what it would be producing and because we are rectifying that, uh, we're actually getting that peak voltage. Yeah, that's, that's good news actually. Everything seems to be working pretty well. It's only um, providing 5 amps at the moment, but uh, I think that is because we're not drawing very much here. Actually, I'll do a test here. Let's find out. So we got 5 amps. I'm just going to turn on my water and let my pump kick in here. In a moment, that should jump. There we go. Oh, 25. Yikes. <laughs> I think this calculation is uh, inaccurate. I have a 15 amp fuse on that output, so uh, I suspect that uh, this thing thinks it's pulling more than it actually is. Hmm. Well, I'd call that a success. Uh, in a moment, we'll go out with the headlamp uh, and just check on it. Uh, I, <laughs> it's just, uh, I'm just testing it tonight. Uh, I'm going to find a better um, case solution for it. Right now I've just mounted everything to a piece of 2x4 and uh, hot glued a fan in front of it um, just to keep the temperature down. And so we'll grab the temperature gun, a headlamp. Let's go take a look and make sure something hasn't melted. Okay, let's go see. I've got my uh, temperature gun. Hmm. Everything seemed to work well. It didn't over temp, nothing melted, uh, nothing caught fire. Maybe it's not as exciting, but uh, <laughs> at least I'm happy. I hope you found that interesting. Um, these videos are going to be fairly random. And so I'm not sure what uh, the subject of the next video will be. Um, just as long as whatever it is crosses the interesting threshold, uh, then I'll post it. I'll try to post a video once a week. Um, we'll see you next time.